If we can go to Hebrews 13, verse, verse 14. The title of the talk is Thanksgiving. Mm, Thanksgiving. <laughs> I was out walking this morning, I was like, Lord, I don't know if this is the right talk, I'm not sure. And like 10 turkeys walk right in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> Pete didn't have any jokes this morning, so Pete, what do you call a 29-year-old that hasn't flown from his, from his mother's home? A turkey. <laughs> you can call me a turkey, brother. <laughs> Lord willing, one day I'll be able to buy a house in Southern California. How do you hear me? Test, test. Okay, okay. Um, in all seriousness, uh, the talk is being thankful. Nothing to do with Thanksgiving or turkeys, but being thankful. And the Lord has a lot of depth in his word about being thankful and how we should be thankful to him in multiple ways. So if we're in Hebrews 13, we're just going to read two scriptures here, just to warm up on the thought of being thankful to the Lord. Hebrews 13, verse 14. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And it says, but to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. So we're instructed to give thanks continually, have it on our lips. Praise the Lord. There's a few other scriptures that just reinforce how we should be thankful to the Lord. I'm just going to read them out for time. Um, 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 15 through 18. Interesting to start for a later point. It says, See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but, um, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So once again, the Lord instructing us to give thanks. And also as a side note, don't render evil for evil. We'll get back to that. Uh, again, another reinforcing scripture, last one. Colossians 3, 12 through uh, 17. You can jot it down in your notes and read it for yourself. It says, put on therefore as the elect of God, Holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Oh, another note. Take down that note, right? Don't render evil for evil. Forgive one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And to, to thee which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. So again, be thankful. So now, what can we be thankful to the Lord for? And can we be thankful? If we love the Lord God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, absolutely. We can be thankful to the Lord. All the people said, Amen. Amen. We can be thankful to the Lord for our salvation, for all the little blessings. But the scriptures also talk about people who are unthankful. And to be honest, it, when, when you're walking in the Spirit, well, let's put it this way. When you're trying to walk in the Spirit, we'll get back to that, when you're actually walking in the Spirit. When you're trying to walk in the Spirit and you see somebody who is unthankful, it can be frustrating. It can be really frustrating. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. says, uh, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Living in the end times, there are going to be people who are unthankful. And how are we going to deal with them? Um, a quick story in the Gospels, that Jesus came across ten lepers, in Luke 17, 11, you can write it down for notes later. And it came to pass, as Jesus went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. 
And as he entered into the certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, shew yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed, they were healed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, just one of them, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his, on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, giving thanks to Jesus, being thankful. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten that were cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save the stranger. And he said unto them, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. So Jesus showing mercy on all ten, even though he knew that the other nine were going to be unthankful. So what's our attitude when we come across people who are unthankful? Are we going to lash out at them? Are we going to render evil for evil? Are we not going to forgive? Let's see what the Lord does. Let's go to Luke 6. Luke 6, 35. So we're instructed to be thankful. There's people in the world who are going to be unthankful. What's our attitude going to be when we come across them? Jesus says in Luke 6, verse 35. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be called the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. That's our God. He is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. It's against our, our natural man. It's against the heart of man to do something good to somebody who is unthankful. That is completely against the grain. That is the salmon swimming upriver. <laughs> that is so hard for the natural man to do. But with the Spirit of God, it is, it is possible. And we're told to be fashioned in the image of Christ. This is what Christ did. This is who we are. And that's what's going to win souls, is when we walk in the Spirit and we do the things that God called us to do. Let's go to Matthew 6 to close. So I thought that was a really deep point that the Lord brings out in his word. That even to those who are unthankful, to be kind to them. And it's really going to be a strong testimony to that person. Maybe they're one of the nine, uh, one of the ten lepers that come back and thank the Lord and get saved. Or to people observing us all around. And they're seeing the testimony of God work in you. And you're showing the love of God to the unthankful. And they come to the Lord because of it. It's really deep, the Lord's word. Um, so Matthew 6, we'll get to it in a second. Um, it's too bad that Pastor Mark and Anthony had to go home. But um, uh, Anthony, he brought out in the, in the word at a Wednesday night meeting, Skype meeting with San Pedro and Canada and Seattle. He gave the talk one Wednesday night. And he talked about being thankful. And he says, you can give, give thanks to the Lord in all the little things. And it's like a, a snow, snowball, rolling down a snowy hillside. And it just picks up more snow and picks up more snow. It's the snowball effect. And so what can we give thanks in our lives to the Lord that just picks up more snow and picks up more snow? Um, two and a half months, I was in Minneapolis for airline training. And a lot of times I was on Facebook uh, checking my other job in the port whether or not I'd be able to get work there when I get home. But a lot of the times on my Facebook feed, it was Revival Fellowship testimonies and prayers. Somebody reaching out to all the brethren saying, I have this need. I need help. I'm hurting. I'm sick. I'm, I'm uh, struggling. And then the response from all the saints all around the world, I'm praying for you. Here's a scripture. I'm praying for you. Uh, message me if you need um, some more encouraging stories. And, and this this heart of just thanksgiving started pouring out to me. Like, Lord, thank you for this Facebook page. And then all of a sudden, thank you, Lord, for the moderators that watch over this, thing, this uh, Facebook page to make sure it doesn't get abused. Thank you, Lord, for all the saints that uh, contribute and pray for all the, the saints that are hurting and, and are healing. And thank you, Lord, for providing the miracles. The next thing I know, I was like, oh, avalanche, it's coming down. The snow is coming down. Praise the Lord. 
<laughs> so, in our own lives, what can we be thankful to the Lord for? And why is it important? Um, even a, a natural note. Um, on the drive up here, uh, I looked through a, a scholarly article. This is, sounds pretty boring. It's in the Health Harvard um, website. And a few medical researchers, psychological psychologists uh, looked into the effects of somebody who is grateful, somebody who is thankful. And it says, in posit positive psychology research, uh, gratitude, or being thankful, is strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. Gratitude helps people feel more positive emotions, relish good experiences, improve their health, deal with adversity, and build strong relationships. People in the world don't have the Lord. Their, their ability to give thanks runs out. But our ability to give thanks to the Lord is forever. And all the people said, Amen. Amen.